Hello my friends and fellow Vetsies. It is in fact that time again, the time when I talk about the electric company. And honestly, this seems like a better time than ever to be talking about it. You know, there was a bit of a word girl resurgence earlier this year, and if word girl gets a resurgence, it's only a matter of time before the electric company gets one. Plus, my theme is music. I mean, if there's one thing that the electric company did excellently, it was the music. And so I figured it would be fun to go through all of the music. Well, not all of the music. That would take forever and a half days. Instead, I'm going to do all of the music that is in the plot section of the show. So no Silanese and Ninja, no Pocket Full of H's, none of that stuff, but all of the stuff in the show sung by the characters. And I'm going to rank them with the tier ranking because decisions are hard and there are a lot of songs still. I mean, there were 52 episodes of this show and some of them have multiple songs. So let's get started with season one and the theme song. I mean, yeah, the theme song is a good song and it's a good representation of what the typical style of the show is. A little bit of pop, a little bit of rap, a little bit of a sort of Broadway style. It's very fitting for the show. That being said, it's not the most memorable song. It's not the catchiest. And I've always had a pet peeve with this song that is extremely petty, but I have to say it anyways. Why doesn't Keith have a solo? All of the other members of the Electric Company have a little solo moment in the theme song. Some of them are more pronounced than others, but all of the other three have a solo. And it's not like Ricky can't sing, Ricky Smith can sing. So there's no reason for him not to have just a little moment in the song. And yes, I understand that this is a very petty reason to knock it down a peg, but because of this, the song gets a B. And now we head into episode one, Skills, with the first song of the episode, We've Got Skill. This is great. This is an awesome introduction to the electric company and to these powers and these personalities. It's fun and it's catchy and definitely memorable. A tier. And then later in the episode, we get Keith's song, Take the Pledge. Ricky's got a strong voice. It's a nice song. Nothing terribly special though, so B tier. Next is 100% Human. God, this is, this is a weird one to judge because yes, it is a pretty decent rap about being a human and not being a dog. But on the other hand, it's not a great rap and also it's a rap about being a human and not being a dog. I don't know, it's not bad. It's, it's not bad at all. It's just not the most memorable thing. So uh, this is our first C tier. It's a solidly average song. Now we're into our first prankster song with Nature Lover, a Danny Rebus number. By sheer virtue of being a Danny Rebus number, it is already incredible. It's got a fun funk to it. Totally a solid number, B tier. Where's in the Wise, which also is sometimes called Look a Little Harder. There's not a lot of concrete titles for these songs, if we're being honest. Unless they were posted by the Electric Company YouTube channel back in the day, we're kind of just guessing. Um, if anyone has official titles, you know, like if there was official sheet music or anything included in scripts that anyone has access to, I would love to hear that. But I'm just going with what I've got. And this one is fine. The chorus is actually pretty good. It's just that the verses are too slow to really be fun. And so it sort of drags it down, but it's still a C tier song. Next we get, Are We Gonna Make It? And uh, this is our first example of the talk singing that does happen fairly often. It's not rapping. It, it's not rapping, but it's not singing either. It is full just talk singing. And the moments where people are sing-singing are actually very fun, and everyone can sing-sing, so I don't see why they're not. And it really drags the song down that they aren't singing. 
So it's just a weird execution of a middling song, which makes it our first E tier. My name is Spamboni. Uh, this is like 20 seconds long. However, it's an iconic 20 seconds, and I'm mad that it's not longer. I want an entire rap of Manny doing pasta trash talk. D tier because there's not more pasta trash talk. Master Plan. Okay, confession, Dirty Laundry is like one of my favorite episodes. It came out on my 10th birthday. I love this episode and I love Manny Spamboni in general. The villain songs on this show are some of the best and Manny in particular gets some real iconic ones. This is one that I can just play in my head perfectly. I remember it from start to finish, angles, choreography, lyrics, everything, A tier. The chess song. This is another one of those raps that is uh, too slow and not quite clever enough in its lyrics to be fun. The visuals are actually pretty funny in the sense of the chessboard and them being the pawns and stuff. That's pretty clever, but the song itself isn't entertaining enough on its own to really be worth listening to, so D tier. The basketball song. This is more talk singing. It doesn't need to be talk singing, but the oh, oh, dare we ask it is actually catchy, so D tier. She's a nice girl. Yes, finally, we have some high quality musical number shit going on. Iconic, so catchy, so fun, so many characters, great production, iconic shit happening here. Love it, we'd love to see it. Everyone sounds great. The dancing's fun. Lots of really cool stuff going on here. S tier shit. Ode to Calvero. Jack McBrayer sounds surprisingly good singing this. Based off of the rest of his stuff, I would not expect him to sound this good. The song isn't anything particularly special though, so C tier. Persevere. This is just such an iconic, memorable song. This is one that the cast and crew seemed especially fond of in interviews and stuff. It got referenced and I can see why. It's just fun and catchy and so entertaining and memorable and I love it a lot. And my brother and I referenced it all the time growing up, S tier. Mary Prankster Band. This is the song the pranksters sing to drive Hector fucking insane. It's very good for that. I love the upbeat Sousa marching band sort of feel to it. It's just so catchy. It's just also not a real song. So C tier. Do the Oranga Choke. This is just a fun dance number. It's catchy, it's fun, it's bright, it's got Danny Rebus in it, which immediately bumps it up higher than it normally would be A-tier stuff. Step Up. This is just cute. Like, this is just so cute. Can you blame us for shipping Hector and Lisa when this happened? It's so stinking cute. And the song itself is really sweet and sincere, and it is a good little motivational number. A tier. The Limerick Slam. Points for having Andrea Burns do a bit of a musical number in this. Minus points for only doing it for like 40 seconds. Still, the payoff is hysterical, and so it has to get a C tier at the very least. There's no right or wrong in art. This is just a really solid song. It's simple, but it's catchy and effective. And the way it ties into the story is really smart and fun and interesting. And letting it sort of bounce between Hector and Lisa works really well. Jenny and Josh are two of the strongest vocalists, so letting them take the lead is smart. And it just sounds nice, A tier. If you need hypnosis to change your behavior, go see Sigmund Scrambler, he'll help you, he'll save ya. You'll be so happy, so happy you went to Sigmund Scrambler's habit-breaking hypnotism tent. Ooh. 
So Electric Company has so much singing going on in it. There's just, oh my God, they were having a time with this episode. But Sigmund Scrambler's Habit Breaking Hypnotism Tent, the jingle that they put into this episode, is so fun and so bright and so catchy, which makes it so much funnier when everybody who's been hypnotized to sing it starts to hate the song and everyone starts to hate the song because it's been playing so much. Iconic. We love to see it. So good. New lyrics and the last note. I combined these two because pretty much everything that's true about one is true about the other and they're both so short that there's not really a point of judging them as individuals. They're fun, the lyrics are clever, the harmonies are good, and most importantly, Mark Lynn Baker is singing. We love Sigmund Scrambler, we love Mark Lynn Baker. Having him do stuff is always a delight. But even still combined, these have like maybe two minutes worth of singing involved. And it's pretty standard, so C tier. Keith's song for his dad. This is just sweet and genuine and a nice little song. Ricky sings it well and the rest of the cast do nice harmonies and it's just sweet. B tier. Follow through. Jenny is great. The song is fairly standard. The chorus is pretty good. The verse is B tier. One part you, one part me. It's cute. It's fun. It's a little short. I like to whine line is the highlight of the entire thing. I don't think Ashley and Jenny's voices blend awesomely together. Ashley's voice is so distinct it's kind of hard to blend with anyone's, but Jenny in particular, it has a bit of a weird sound to it, but it's fun and so it's hard to really hold it against them. C tier. Manny's love song. I love this song. I love all the Manny's Bamboni songs, but this one is just so sweet and sincere, but still goofy. It's just, I mean, it's a love song about Little Mean Robot. It's exactly what you want it to be. Absolutely ridiculous. I love it so much. B tier. Clear My Name. Critical Thinking is weirdly a big plot point in a lot of episodes and of the songs that are specifically about please critically think y'all this is the best one fairly standard in the music category but josh is really selling it so b tier fluffy cheese y'all i don't know what they were doing with this episode it's weird it's like a weirdly aggressive rock instrumental even though nobody else is doing a rock thing and it's like also vaguely operatic with the harmony i just i don't understand what they were doing here this entire episode is confusing but this song especially d tier special skill god this is another weird one i i really love it Ashley's really going for it with the whole Francine is an evil, spoiled brat who wants to rule the world thing. That's really entertaining, and the ending when she's controlling the electric company gets really fun. The song itself is just kind of... a little monotonous. There really isn't a lot of melody here, but the performance is really selling it, so C tier. Nobody's perfect. This is another one of the rap songs where I just don't understand why they didn't give it a chorus that had something to do because the rap part is actually pretty all right, except for the chorus, which is really annoying and it's just happening. Uh, th this whole episode is a little weird, but most of it I'm into. This song in particular is just a little... A little not my style, E tier. Danny Rebus Blues. I want this song to be A tier. I really do. In my heart, it is. But the problem is, when I think about it, I'm thinking about the beginning and I'm thinking about the chorus. The verses are nothing. They are dragging it down. 
I want this to be so much higher than it is, but actually listening to the song, I can't in good conscience put it higher than a C tier. All right, so those are all of the season one songs. There are so many of them. So this obviously has to be split up into multiple parts. So tune in next time for season two. All right, my friends and fellow Betsies, I will see you tomorrow.